welcome back to my channel. Today I'm so excited. I'm going to be doing my November wrap up. Since it is the 1st of December, I want to show you guys what I read for the month of November. I hope you guys had an amazing Thanksgiving. I'm sorry that I did not post a blog or a video, but we had 19 people in the house <laughs> over Thanksgiving. It got a little hectic. There was no time to film and do everything and put it all together. So I decided to just go ahead and skip last week because of the holidays. I hope you guys aren't too distressed over it. I hope you guys had an amazing holiday if you celebrate Thanksgiving. If you do not celebrate Thanksgiving, well, I hope you had food. I hope you enjoyed your day. I don't know. I hope you enjoyed Black Friday. I know that some people, like in Canada, I saw Coffee and Chapters, they still do Black Friday, even though they celebrate Thanksgiving in October, which is kind of funny, and I'm sorry we Americans sent that horrid, horrid tradition over to you guys. But if you did go Black Friday shopping, I hope you guys had fun, and I hope you got some really good deals, Christmas presents, books. I didn't go Black Friday shopping this year. My cousins had to leave Thursday night, so we missed out on the tradition, but that's okay. We still had fun the next day. We went to a small town near us, and it's just a cute little town with a bunch of little shops, so we decided to stop there, and it was really, really cute. We enjoyed that, but there's always Cyber Monday, right? I did get some books from Book Outlet, so hopefully Book Outlet Hall will be coming soon. <laughs> love that but today I don't have that so we're going to be doing my November wrap-up I got through a lot more books than I thought I would this month uh, I went through quite a few for pleasure I did a couple for review and then one for a book club that I absolutely loved so without further ado we're just gonna go ahead and jump right in to seeing what I read and what I thought about them Real fast before we get into that, if you hear any noise, uh, the window by me is open and I live on a busy highway, so cars are driving up and down the street. But I thought it's beautiful outside, so why not enjoy the cool weather and some beautiful sunlight as well. So the first book I read this month, I had actually started um, kind of at the end of October, just because it was the November pick for the book club that I'm a part of. So I started it kind of then, but I finished it a couple days into November. And that was An Inconvenient Beauty by Christy Ann Hunter. This is book four in the Hawthorne House series. Well, book four of full-length novel. I've talked about this before, but it's book four of the full-length novels of the Hawthorne House series. And this is following Griffith and Isabella. It was great. I loved it. I really, really enjoyed it. The family aspect had me laughing. It had me giggling. It had me smiling. Everybody in everybody's business was just great. I loved it. I did, I believe I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I loved it that much. And I cannot wait to read the other books in the series. I do have three, two, two of the other books I need to get the second one in this series, but I am very, very, very excited to read them, and I really enjoyed this book. I read No Other Will Do by Miss Karen Whitmire. I loved this book. Um, this is following Emma and Malachi. Emma. It was so cute. They knew each other, and they were really, really, really good friends growing up. Um, they met when they were about 11, I think, and they like kind of kept in contact with each other throughout the years but didn't see each other and then emma needed his help she runs the harper station which is a town of all women and just women women do everything there's only one man or two men that are allowed to come through one is the reverend who comes through and two is benjamin porter who is the um like he brings and takes their goods but she sends for Malachi because there is some danger lurking. There is a uh, outlaw who is trying to 
run all the women out of town. So she calls Malachi in and it was really, really cute. I love stories like this where they, they know each other and they grew up and they haven't seen each other in years. Something about him is just so sweet. The suspense aspect to this book was amazing. I loved not knowing why the guy was after them. You know, I had a couple ideas running through my mind. I was completely taken aback at who the outlaw was and who was helping him out. There is a bit of betrayal. So that was really, really fun to read and I really, really enjoyed it. I believe I also gave this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I love her books. I'm very, very excited to finish off the series and I really, really enjoyed this and I, of course, love her writing and I love Karen Whitmire. The next book I read, I I think I might have read this before, Karen's book, but I don't care. It's okay, I read them, so I'm going to talk about it. That was Rules of Murder by Juliana Deary. This is book one of the Drew Farthering Mysteries, and I'm so excited that I was finally able to start it. It was so good. I, I really, really, really enjoyed it. It was a quick romance, um, Drew and Madeline like of course they're already in love by the end of the book but they don't get married yet the rest of the series just like kind of follows their love story as well as other murders i i loved it like there were a lot of deaths that i was really saddened over like i it was so terrible like i wasn't expecting I really wasn't expecting one of the murders, like it threw me off, and I didn't think she would kill this character off, but that's, uh, I guess that's the way it goes with mystery writing. The friendship between Drew and his buddy Nick, I loved it. They are both just boys, like they act like little kids, they are so funny they kept me chuckling they kept me laughing and I love when there are strong connections between characters and I love when I can feel that connection and I know that if they were actually real people they would be best friends and they would be the people that you want to hang out with I loved that aspect um Rue is very charming. I loved him. I loved Madeline. Like, I already shipped them so hard. I love them together. It's cute, even though it was a fast romance. Again, I normally don't mind those, so I wasn't complaining too much. I believe I also rated this one a 4 star or 4.5 star. I cannot remember exactly. My link to Goodreads will be in the description so you guys can check out my reviews and my ratings if you guys are curious what I actually really thought of the book because it's been a month and I've read so many other books that I can't really remember what I give it. I just know that I really did enjoy it and I can't wait to read the other books in the series. The next book I'm going to talk about, okay. I was not a fan. I wrote a review about it on my blog. I elaborated some on what I thought about it. Again, shameless promo for the love of Christian fiction. Blogspot.com. Check it out if you want to. The Secret Life of Sarah Hollenbeck by Bethany Turner. I gave this one a 2.5 star out of 5, I believe. I might have given it a 3. I don't think I even went that far. I did not care for this book at all. I will tell you why. One, somebody made a comment on my blog that I absolutely agree with 100%. I think it might have been age that threw me off. Um... I am a teenager and a there were a lot of things that they went through that I have never been through in life yet so my experience is a little different and my thought process is a little different than someone who might have been through these or even an adult who knows people who have gotten through these situations. So this follows Sarah Hollenbeck who is in her 30s and she is divorced. 
she runs in literally runs into the new pastor uh, pastor of this church benjamin something i can't remember his last name but she literally runs into him he's also 30 and his wife passed away of cancer and he has a daughter and instantly they were literally engaged a month and a half after they met which fast engagements fast relationships fast romance and books does not bother me at all because it's fiction it's a book it has to be done in a certain number of pages i get that however this seemed so unrealistic that almost didn't finish it but i kept pushing because i was like alicia maybe it gets better maybe there's something to it i will say bethany did a wonderful job giving these people human characteristics human flaws human insecurities i felt a connection to the characters disliked them quite a bit i bethany's writing was beautiful it's nothing against the author i really enjoyed her writing and i might pick something up from her it was just so i felt like i was reading a mainstream novel that was trying really hard to be christian there were a it was a christian worldview there was bible verses there was prayer there was faith there was trust i loved that but Sarah literally became a Christian in like two sentences, which again, didn't bother me. It ha has to happen fast, but no, it didn't feel like there was enough trial for her personally and individually. Like I felt like she became a Christian and then she was literally in a relationship in the next chapter. There was no growth for her individually is what I'm trying to say. She became a Christian and then I felt like she was almost trying to stay a Christian so she could stay with the pastor and like as the book was going on her faith grew do not get me wrong she stayed a christian and i loved that there's i have no qualms with that i don't like that there wasn't it it seemed unrealistic like i'm at a loss for words I hope I summed it up some in my review. Again, it's on my page. I will link it in the bio because I I don't think that this is not, I would not recommend this to my sister. I would not recommend this for any of my friends who were my age. However, if this was something, if I knew somebody was going through an issue with insecurities and fears and, and issues with their past and they feel like they don't measure up and they're upset and they can't get over their past they haven't forgiven themselves for stuff that they've done i would probably recommend this to them again if they're older if they've been divorced if they've lost a spouse or they are a single parent this could be for them it's it wasn't for me the story itself was not for me and that's okay because we're gonna find those books that aren't for us it wasn't anything that the author did i just didn't care for the story it was um very husband and wife let's go it was very husband and wife status stuff that would be great for someone who was going through that at the moment since I am not, and this was not something that I enjoyed, and I honestly would not pick up this book again. I did enjoy that this book was based in Chicago because I live about 30 minutes from there. My dad was raised in Chicago, and they she actually made a point in the story that Benjamin's, his mother and father-in-law were our pastors in a small town a small town of algonquin in illinois my grandparents actually do or they did before my grandpa passed away um they pastored a church in algonquin it is an actual town it is very small it is very cute and my best friend actually her family now pastors the church in algonquin so that was really cool for me to see it made me smile made me think of my grandpa so i did enjoy that i enjoyed some aspects of it i really did but i it just it wasn't 
for me. So I do believe I gave this a 2.5 star. Um, but I will be looking out for something else by Bethany Turner. I, I did enjoy her writing style, but not for this particular book. The next book I have been looking forward to reading for a couple months. I got it. I loved the idea, the theme, the plot, everything was so unique and so brilliant and I was so excited to read it and I DNF'd it. I did not like it. This month was full, full of ups and downs reading wise, books that I loved, books that I did not. I have come to the histor the first historical fiction book, well I think, that I can remember that I did not finish and did not enjoy. That, my friend, would be Bees in the Butterfly Garden by Miss Maureen Lang. Again, nothing against the author. I really enjoyed her writing style. I talked to a couple of my reading friends on Facebook and they all said that they really enjoy Maureen's books. Pick up something else. They had a hard time getting into this one as well. This is following Margaret Davenport, or Meg Davenport, she likes to be called, go by that, and blah, 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 blah. Ian McGuire. Okay, so Meg has lived in a boarding house her whole life. Her father kept her there. Um, he paid for it. But her father is a thief. So... He dies and she goes to his funeral. She doesn't know that he's a thief. She goes to his funeral and she meets Ian. Ian is John's protege and he's like a son to him. And he doesn't want Meg to find out that her dad was a thief. Well, she finds out. And it's like everything clicks into place for this girl. She will not go back to the boarding school, which is better for her. She won't take anybody's advice who these are people who just met her and are already trying to keep her safe. They are already trying to help her keep her reputation and help her marry wealthy. She won't listen to them. She doesn't want to go back. She thinks that because her dad is a thief, that, oh, it's in her DNA, and she's a thief too, and she's is trying to use her connections to help them out and help them steal. I wanted to pull my hair out. Meg is 18 years old in the story. I thought, like, you know, age, okay, cool. I'm 18 too. I can connect with her, right? No. I literally, if you want the epitome of naive teenager who is so blinded by what she thinks she knows and no growing up, like I got to chapter 14. I tried. I tried. Nope. No. I even skimmed through, which I never, ever, ever do. But I was like, you know what? How does this book end? Because I'm not going to pick it up again. It just, it goes on and on and on and on till the end of the story. Just of her not listening. I don't know. I did not like it. I, I liked Maureen's writing style. Her, her, her style was great. I might pick up something from her again. But this, I, like, I couldn't even finish it. And that's so hard for me. I talked to quite a few people, some friends of mine, and I was like, I, I can't stand her. Like, I just, I, I don't know what to do. And they're like, just put it down, Alicia. Pick up something else. Maybe come back to it later. But it's just going to end up messing with you if, like, you keep reading the story. So I did, I got to a point where I just could not read anymore. I set it down and I probably will never pick it back up. 
honestly. I don't even think it was like a time thing. I think it just was the story and I don't click. So my first DNF of for a very long time, and it's been quite a while since I haven't finished a book, that is Bees in the Butterfly Garden. Again, it might be something you enjoy. I, I don't want to, I'm not trying to dictate or tell somebody, don't try this story, it was awful. I mean, there are some who, if I know the people and I know they won't like it, that I will tell them, don't try it, you won't like it. But it is not, I'm not going to mess with an author's ability to sell books or get their name out there, so that is not what I'm doing. I'm saying, this book was not for me, I did not enjoy it. But somebody else might. I was sad to put down the book just because I really wanted to see Kate and Ian in the story. But I, I couldn't. I, I couldn't do it anymore. So that was my do not finish of the month. The next book that I finished for the month of November. I said in my November TBR that I wanted to read a book about Thanksgiving around Thanksgiving without getting too close because I knew my family was coming in so I didn't have a whole lot of time the week leading up to Thanksgiving since we play a lot of games when my cousins are here so I read this the Sunday night and Monday morning before um, Thanksgiving I finished it within a couple hours it's a short book and the story has moved really quick that is once upon a thanksgiving this is a two book collection one is by linda ford and one is by winnie griggs the book by linda ford is season of bounty and the book by winnie griggs is home for thanksgiving the first story is following kathleen sanderson and buck donahue and in the end they were such a cute couple i really enjoyed that book for the Thanksgiving aspect, the end of the story was them eating Thanksgiving dinner together as a family. So I really did enjoy that. It was cute. I loved the acceptance at the end of the story. Now for Winnie Griggs' story, Home for Thanksgiving, Miss Ruby needs to get away from this small town and Griff is there. Um, so he takes her to his house because he ends up getting sick along the way they were just going to a neighboring town but again he got sick so they had to go to his ranch and ruby i liked her i did her past was written beautifully her emotion towards this past was written beautifully she was a human she had her flaws she had her insecurities and they were written very well and i really enjoyed it it was really sweet you know, you could see the attraction. You could see him fighting with it. And I really loved it. I loved that Ruby was a very avid reader. He, so is he. He had a full library. My dream. And she was able to read and take books with her. In the end, the end of the story, they were also eating Thanksgiving di dinner as a complete family. They got all the siblings together, all the, the hands together and it was great in the end i really did enjoy the book and it was cute to read right before thanksgiving i, I believe i gave this book a four star i think i gave it a four star on goodreads i think i might be wrong again check out my goodreads if you want to you can follow me last book I read in paperback form I've heard so many wonderful things about this author and I finally picked up a couple of her books a few months back and decided that it was time I so I picked up and read Huntress of Thornbeck Forest by Miss Melanie Dickerson this was really cool I enjoyed it as my first I enjoyed this as my first book by her. I did enjoy the book. This is following Odette Minkles and uh, Bergen Hartman. And this is a medieval retelling of Robin Hood. And I think it has a little bit of a uh, swan princess just because her name is Odette. And there are a couple mentions of swans. 
And there's a scene where she goes to a masquerade ball and she is dressed up as a white swan. So I think it has just little tidbits of the swan princess, but it is very much a Robin Hood story. But it switched because Miss Odette herself is our Robin Hood and Jorgen is our forester who's trying to catch this poacher. And they do fall in love. And there is sus some suspense and people who um, I didn't expect to turn and betray her. And I was taken aback a few times because I was like, oh, what? Like, I was kind of getting this feeling in the pit of my stomach where I'm like, okay, I don't know if I trust this person completely. They almost seem too good to be true or they just kind of got on my nerves as a character. Poof, no wonder why. Trust your instincts, people, because they betrayed her in the end and they were actually bad guys. They fell in love with the Margrave. I fell in love with him. I cannot wait to read the next book, which is The Beautiful Pretender, which is book two in the series because it's about him. And I'm so excited because I love him already. I'm very, very excited. Very, very, very excited about that one. But I did enjoy. But I did enjoy the story of Odette and Jorgen, and I'm excited to read more of her books. And that was the last paperback I read in November. The last two books I read for the month of November were ebooks, and they were actually also review books. Uh, the one of them you will read the review for today and the next one will actually go out next week. The first book I read was Forward to What Lies Ahead by Miss Chloe Flanagan and I really really enjoyed it. Um, I will probably buy it in paperback because I loved the story. It was a fast moving uh, novella pretty much. It wasn't very long um, about a young girl named Regina and a boy named Mac. What was his last name? MacArthur, I believe. Mac is his nickname. But there were so many plot twists. Like, I needed a couple days to recuperate from the story. It was so emotional. Books don't make me cry a lot, but I literally sat and just I like tears came to my eyes it was a great story of love and redemption it was beautiful it was written wonderfully um I didn't really care for Regina at first she just kind of annoyed me she was so logical and just blah blah blah, blah, blah. but then I started reading and I realized why she was and I really connected with her I loved her characters I really really enjoyed the book um yeah, there were so many plot twists, and I was not expecting them at all. Like, the twist and turn of events, I just wasn't expecting. I loved it. This is Chloe's debut uh, novel, debut story, and I really suggest you pick it up. You can pick it up on Kindle um, or paperback. I loved it. It was great. So good so good like I will reread the story I'm going to get paperback so I can reread it I liked it that much I believe I rated 4.5 out of 5 stars it was so good I really liked it the last book that I read for the month of November is called predestined loved by Marshall Patterson you guys will read my review on this next week <sighs> The author herself seems really sweet. I've talked to her um, on Instagram. That's how she messaged me to review her books. And I just... Nothing against the author personally. Do not get me wrong. I hate when I, when I don't enjoy a book. I hate when I have to either not finish it or give it a bad review or a not good number of... Like, not a high amount of stars. I don't enjoy doing it because this is their life this is what they do this is their occupation but at the same time i know that it is my job to be honest 
and it is my job to let other people know if I enjoy it or not. She asked me for my honest opinion, so that is what I'm going to give. And again, it is an opinion, so it's not going to be everybody's. It's mine. I do have another book that I am reading by her um, called The Path of the Chosen Warriors, and my review will be up in a couple weeks, but I don't know. I think it's just her writing style. She is a, these were her debut stories and you can really tell. But there's always room for improvement and if this is what she believes God is taking her down the path then and she's praying for it and she's believing and she's letting him lead her then I believe her stories can get better and I will continue to support her, her stories. They seem like they have some good ideas behind them. They aren't my forte, they're not for me. Again, my opinion, they could be for somebody else, but they just were not for me. So those are the books that I read this month. I read a total of one, two, three, four, five, six paperbacks that I finished. I started seven, and then I read two ebooks. So we are at, what, eight books for the month of November. I'm very proud of myself. I set myself a strict pretty strict schedule i didn't read anything else that i hadn't really set aside for myself other than the book by melanie dickerson that being said i probably will not do another tbr like that because i am a mood reader so there were books that i wanted to pick up but didn't because i wanted to finish these books so there was that but i did enjoy giving myself a schedule i'm glad that i was able to stick to it and yeah I'm really happy with my November TBR and for the month of December I don't have a set TBR um, I will be focusing like as in pleasure books I will be doing review books for the entire month of December but yeah the month of December will be spent reading all my review books that uh, authors have kindly 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 sent me and then hopefully the month of January I will be able to get back to all of my other books my beautiful other books that are on my shelves. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you guys had an amazing holiday. Check out my blog for the love of Christian fiction .com, and check out my Instagram for the love of Christian fiction. And I will see you guys next week with a fun video. Alright, bye.